How to rewind an induction motor Induction motor is the most popular electrical equipment in the world. It is virtually hard to imagine factories, plants, even commercial buildings not taking advantage of this technological wonder. Although this equipment is oftentimes durable, it is still invincible against the most powerful dimension in the world. Time. That is right. Over time, the windings of the motor begin to deteriorate until it fails. That is why the motor rewinding is a very popular business everywhere. So for today, let me teach you how to rewind the motor yourself without the help of an experienced personnel. But first, we need to prepare for the necessary material to complete the task. First is the insulation paper. We need these to insert on the slots of the stator of the motor. Cut them into rectangular sizes that fits to the slots. Second, the copper coils. Make sure that you buy the new coils the same size with the one you are going to replace. So if it is size 20, then go buy size 20. Do not attempt to experiment. Third, the insulating varnish. After the rewinding, we need to apply the liquid to help reduce eddy current loss. Fourth, asbestos tie wire. In order to fix the windings, we need to tie it with something. Unfortunately though, we cannot just use any ties because the ambient temperature in the windings is so high. So we need a tie that can resist to it. Asbestos is a good candidate. The first step on rewinding is opening the inside of the motor. A lot of times this is easier said than done. Even though there are screws already attached to it, rust would simply make us do more than unscrewing. Sometimes we are forced to use grinding tools, cutting tools, and even strike the screws with flat edge in order to loosen it. WD-40s can also help in loosening the screws. The second step. The second step is data recording. First, record the number of conductors per slot. If the induction motor is single phase, then you may count a lot more than the three phase induction motor since their winding pattern is different. Second, draw a schematic diagram from the old connection for a record. The third step is removing the old windings. This is rather a simpler task. You just have to cut the ties in the windings, pull the windings out of the slots, and remove the paper insulation out of the slots. Be careful not to damage the stator as it is very hard to rectify or you may just throw the induction motor to the garbage bin if you did so. The fourth step is inserting the paper insulation. Make sure that the paper insulation that you cut is the same size with the previous one that you removed. Make as many rectangles as with the number of slots and insert them all in the slots. The fifth step of rewinding is to make a circular pattern with the same diameter with the windings that you removed. Also, you need to have the same number of turns as those windings. Again, just copy the original and do not attempt to modify. The sixth step is insert the circular pattern of coils to the slots. The same pattern that was used in the previous windings. Make sure that the end terminal of each windings are spread outside. The seventh step is connecting the end terminal of each winding to a number of wires depending on the type of motors. In here, 
We do not mind if it is single phase or three phase motor. All you need to do is copy the previous connections of each windings and you are all set. Eighth step. The eighth step is tie the windings in order for it to become mechanically balanced. The normal pattern of this is to move the tie around the circular stator using a lead needle in order for it to easily pass through in between multiple windings. The ninth step is apply an insulating varnish to the windings and let it dry for a couple of hours. The eleventh step is testing the continuity of the windings. This is easily done by a multi-tester. We need to confirm that the terminals which we intend to be connected are connected and the terminals which we intend not to be connected are unconnected. The twelfth step is wire termination. Since we intend this video to be a guide for rewinding various types of motors, we advise that you just copy the previous terminations done before the winding was dismantled. So before you actually dismantle a motor, be sure to check the original connections and draw a diagram, schematic diagram, from it so you just copy the connections to your new connections. The thirteenth and last step is reassembling the induction motor. So return the motor now back to its original position in the assembly and fasten every screws and accessories to make your stand fan whole again. Special thanks to these people for taking the footage.